In this set of slides, we're going to look at negative feedback and how we're going to use it in operational amplifiers and why we use it in operational amplifiers. So first, we have this generalized uh, setup for what negative feedback looks like. In the uh, system, we have some input S sub i that goes into a summation block. Uh, the difference of that signal goes into uh, an amplification block, and at the output, some of the signal is returned and subtracted from the input. I'm going to label this node S2 and this node is going to be beta times S out. So we have, first of all, that S out is equal to A times S2. And we know that S2 is equal to SI minus beta times S out. If we combine these two, we can get the following expression. S out is equal to A times SI minus beta times S out. And some algebraic manipulation yields our expression for gain, S out over SI. This is equal to A divided by 1 plus A times beta. Now in the limit of S out over SI, where A goes to infinity, which is what we want from our voltage amplifier, this of course just equals 1 over beta. So if we can make our gain very large, then we only, then uh, the uh, amplifier gain very large, then the uh, gain in our closed loop feedback system is going to be approximated by the feedback network only, which consists of beta. We have a few things to look at here. Beta is defined as the feedback factor. This is how much of the signal we send back uh, to the input from the output. A times beta is called the loop gain. This is the gain as we transit one time around the loop in the circuit. And we can call our term a divided by 1 plus A times beta is the closed loop gain. Keep these in mind. They're going to become important when we start looking at stability in our amplifiers in a, in a few uh, days. We already know one common circuit. Uh, the inverting uh, configuration of our operational amplifier and we know that this uh, gain is commonly uh, found to be negative R2 over R1, the ratio of the resistances. And we know that if the gain of the op amp is big enough this is approximately equal to 1 over beta. So we know our first beta uh, is minus R1 over R2. Now this is going to be important because uh, this is a ratio of resistances and we'll examine uh, a few of the characteristics that this negative feedback provides us right now. So one, negative feedback ensures that we get a finite, negative feedback ensures that we have a finite output. Since the gain of the op amp can be quite large if we don't have feedback, by providing a feedback network around the amplifier, we reduce the gain of the amplifier and make it usable. Secondly, the gain of our system depends on only the external components. To a first order. And these are going to be our R1 and R2, for instance, in the above example. And finally, it's easy for us to make an op amp with transistors that has very high gain. But it's much more difficult to get a precise gain.
And this is because our components are going to vary uh, typically by plus or minus 5%. Uh, so when we uh, place these components, we're going to get uh, variability uh, in the gain. So what we're going to do is rely on ratios in order to reduce the variability. And you see here in our first example, the gain is equal to R2 divided by R1. Well, if these resistances move in the same direction. Say this one changes by some delta r, and this one changes by some delta r. Then our gain doesn't change by very much. So uh, that's the reason that we're going to use negative feedback. OK. Now, in the next uh, set of slides, we're going to examine why we actually use a differential input in our circuits.